everybody and welcome in to another week of the sfa we've got season 13 week 14 the last week of the regular season let me know if you can hear me so we can go ahead and get started if you're new to the sfa it's an online dynasty ran through discord twitch and youtube uh you can join claim a team set depth charts um you can hire coordinators, set your playbooks, recruit, and also participate in a bunch of server games that help you with recruiting as well. It's a really fun time if you want to join. Links are in the description or we have the Discord command as well. And uh, it's week 14, the last week of the regular season. And what that means for Bear Cave is that every single game that, that we're going to watch today does impact a division race, a conference championship race, and the playoff race. So... Every single game is going to matter, except one, but that's the sickos game of the week. Um, as always, if you are watching live, you uh, you might run into some ads or two, so feel free to use that Twitch Prime sub. It is free if you have Prime. Um, it gets rid of the ads, helps support the channel, and you guys, if somebody does win the national championship, I will send them a care package with an actual real-life trophy. Um, so, yeah. And as always, we want to shout out our friends over at Home Field today. Uh, and they're running something cool today, free shipping. If you use the coupon code free ship, F-R-E-E-S-H-I-P. And make sure to use our referral link either through the Twitch chat with the command or in the Discord. And you get free shipping today. Um, best apparel brand out there. Vintage design, super comfortable. And yeah. Um, it's going to be a banger today. Uh, yeah, Yui, Yui is going bowling no matter what. That's hype. Um, and we also had uh, some really tough losses for some users, most notably. Fink is drops to 5-7 and seven after choking against Texas Tech. Uh, that's Kansas. And then we had Florida State choke against FIU to not make a bowl. And then Maryland choked to Purdue to not make a bowl. So two winless teams keeping out five and six teams. Oh, baby. So, yeah, there, there, there's quite a few rough ones. Um, but let's get it started here, as always. And we're going to start out with one of the best games of the season at, every year. It's Army-Navy. But this year, it means just a little bit more. I don't know why I'm going to the Independents. I know they're in the American. But this game impacts our game day game, which is going to be Rutgers and Cincinnati coming up a little bit later. If Navy wins, the, the game day is just a straight up, whoever wins goes to the AAC championship. If Army wins, then all of a sudden Cincinnati has to win game day by over five. Otherwise, Rutgers will go to the championship no matter what. So then they'll have that five point buffer. So it'll basically become like a spread, right? So... Uh, a lot on the line for this Army-Navy. Uh, Coco, if you're here, let me know. Heads or tails, kick or receive. As I always go with the away team when it's user versus user. And yeah, also shout out to Mushbrain. He got to bowl eligibility after a couple crazy weeks and an upset over Penn State. I'm pretty sure Dierico Claxon got hurt there in that game because, yeah, he only mustered eight points. But we'll see if Navy can do it. I do not believe they have a chance of bull eligibility here. Um, I, it's just more for, uh, for um, you know, obviously the bragging rights. The Commander-in-Chief's trophy already going to Air Force, funny enough. They beat both of these teams. But let's get on into Army-Navy here today. If you are betting on this game, it is a seven-point favorite for the Black Knights. And the over-under is 53 and a half. Super hyped as it is the last regular season game day of the season. We go into playoff mode after this, or conference championship mode for next week. Always a lot of fun. Only one more cycle for recruiting. Remember, recruiting will come after CFP rankings tonight. Welcome in, Logan. And make sure when you open your uh, package for home field to send me a picture so I can include it in our Secret Santa video that I'm going to put together. Or real or whatever I'm gonna do but army navy here we go we uh outside of those couple of um 
bowl eligibility uh, blunders, there wasn't really any crazy upsets that I saw in the top 25. Stanford survived, um, unless I'm missing one, but I think that we haven't we kind of went all chalk in the top 25. But remember, the CFP committee does throw out last week's rankings and reassesses everything, so there may be some movement this week regardless of if everybody wins. All right, here we go. Heads and kick. I do not see Coco. And we are off on the final Bear Cave stream of the season. Florida Man gifting a sub to Tribe. Shout out to Tribe. That's hype, Florida man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, one of the bigger supporters of the channel. Uh, no, we are just starting right now. And if you don't know how Bear Cave works, is we live sim all the games like this. If it's close at the end, we will jump in. As Navy takes a 10-point lead. So they're trying to avoid the chaos scenario. They're doing a favor for the AAC. But all of a sudden, here comes Army. Now remember, Army is a little um, shorthanded. They don't have their best player, Ruddy Rogers. So... 10-10 uh, here in the third quarter, just the way Army-Navy likes it. Navy does take the lead. So as we enter the fourth quarter here, it's tied. It's 17, baby. One more drive here. We're in five minutes. I'm going to go one play at a time because both of these teams are very capable of having drives that last over like five minutes. So we're just going to go one play at a time here. Army has a chance, but a penalty, and they get a big play. Can they get a first down? Five-yard penalty on the defense. That is brutal, and they score a touchdown. So Army takes the lead. Remember, we'll jump in at the two-minute mark if it is still close. A big play to Bernice Cesaro from Sammy Baugh, and this is where we jump in. Down by seven. Can Navy come back here? Again, I mean, they had the lead most of the game. Their first deficit of the day. Sammy Baugh, the transfer from ULM, dumps that off, and he has a lot of room. That's going to be another first down. Tony Nolan, we've seen him make big plays all season long for the Navy midshipmen. In motion, Sammy Baugh, he has it over the middle. That looked like a duck, but it's completed. And that's going to be Lenny Fowler, the SFA player. And ironically, it's uh, it's the SFA bust from last season. He's had a decent year coming in at 70 overall. Scooter Burdett, the SFA middle linebacker, transfer from Iowa State, doing well. Boff, man, Boff is just cooking this defense right now as Justin Johnson gets three. They still have all three timeouts, but clock is running as we go inside a minute 30. This game coming down to the wire. I formation. Remember, Navy has gone away from the traditional. Um, they've gone away from the traditional triple option, but they still can give it to the fullback and have them burn you up the gut. Big run there. Yes, uh, Coco changed the offense to something rough. I don't know what he changed it to, but first and ten here inside the ten. Sammy Baugh. He's going to hand it off. It's a power run. Rex Oslin to the outside. He's that transfer from Boise State. Got to love Navy getting transfer portal grabs as we're inside the 10 now. Time really not a factor here for Navy as Army's trying to save some time now. Second and seven. Ba, he's going to drop back. He has plenty of time. And wide open, man. Justin Johnson ties it up. 20 for all here in the Army Navy game. Sammy Baugh, no incompletions as he breaks the school record. It's really not that big of a record, to be honest. 24 touchdowns in a season. The change in the offense, the transfer from ULM. And are they going to go for two? No, they're just going to take the score. So Army has a chance to respond now. And remember, this game heavily impacts not only the AAC championship race, which is our game day later on between Rutgers and Cincinnati, but it this game is the catalyst to what's going to happen to the rest of the group of five race for the college football playoff auto bid. So now Army, they do run that traditional, um, I want to say traditional, nothing's really traditional in this game, but 
uh, they do run the triple option offense as we got uh, Kemp here dumping that one off. Might be Jabari Manning. No, it's Mike Williamson. He's actually the third string running back. As they're going to hurry it up now, they still have one timeout. Julian Kemp having himself a decent day. They're hurrying it up now. He can run, and there he goes. He has room down the right side, and he slides. He almost got met by the linebacker, but he uh, picks up a ton, and he is the X factor for this offense without Ruddy Rogers, the impact player. 42 seconds left. They hurry up to the line. They're going to run another play here. Only four man rushing. He floats it out wide. It's intercepted by Navy. Navy's going the other way. Down the sideline. TJ Sanderson can't grab him. And Navy takes over with a chance to win. Jonathan Kramer. What a pick and what a mistake. And now, Navy's in business. They can win this game. Over the middle, it's complete. Bernice Cesaro, the SFA player. They are now in prime position as Bernice Cesaro now is the all-time leader in catches on this team. Here comes Navy. They are now a field goal away. And if Navy scores, this will mean... Game day is a straight-up win, and you're in. First and 10, 17 seconds left. Sammy Baugh, deep drop, floats that out wide, and he finds Cesaro on the sideline. This is a passing attack that Navy has never seen before, and it's working wonders. They still have three timeouts. They're going to try one more play here before bringing out the field goal unit. And off. No, they're going to throw it. Dumps that off to the fullback. He finds the outside, and he goes down with eight seconds left. Robbie Crosby gets about seven. Are they going to run another play, or is this going to be it? They're running another play. So Army in desperation mode. I formation, two tight ends. Hand off up the gut. Rez Osland. He goes down. They're just trying to center it there for the, uh, for the field goal kicker. Five seconds left to win the game. Army's going to ice them. Can we see an epic play from Army? Third and one. Five seconds left to win the Army-Navy game. The kick is up, and it's good. Navy is going to go on to win this game, but there are three seconds left. They're going to keep it, kick it deep. We've seen this scenario before. One play for Army. He cuts outside. He has some room. Oh, and he runs into his own players. Robert jo jo Jackson had a seam. Well, that's going to do it. Navy survives upsetting Army. Tanking their season at 8 and 4. They will not be bull eligible, but I think they'll be happy with that one today. Uh, it's a comeback in the fourth quarter. They kind of controlled this game all day long. What a win for the Navy midshipmen. And Army just two weeks ago thought they might have a path to the CFP, but they drop one to Rutgers, and then they drop it to Navy, and they'll be looking for a bowl game. So this means that game day later on will be a straight-up win, and you are in to the conference championship between Cincinnati and Rutgers. So Navy doing the SFA a favor. Yeah, you're right. It's only a good season. It's always a good season if it's uh. Right. First barricade game in the books, and of course it was nutty, so how's the rest of this barricade going to go? Also, I know that we're about 30 minutes away from the IRL Pac-12 Championship. Obviously, if you want to watch that, go on and watch that. Um, I'd encourage you to watch both same time, uh, as we have far less commercials than IRL. But also, if somebody could let me know what is happening in the game, as I cannot stream it while I'm streaming. So... Uh, if I could get updates in the chat, that would be great. As the Pac-12 Championship is the only game that matters this weekend. 
as we we look at the score summary here and that fourth quarter was crazy Sammy Baugh, 23 of 33, two touchdowns and interception in his first Army-Navy game. Rex Oslin only going for 69. Nice. Uh, Bernice Cesaro, though, taking the top off the defense. He is going to be a great player. And he was only a one-star player. Julius Nambo getting himself a uh, sack. And anytime you have upsets like this, it's always those star players, the ones that make the play. Kramer making that key interception. And for Coach MZ, his season ends at 8 and 4. Julian Kemp, 15 of 25, getting outplayed by Sammy Baugh. Uh, he was the leading rusher, though. And TJ Sanderson, the SFA player, as well, leading in receiving. Both these teams are um, well made up. But Buzz Modella, the former uh, SFA Bear Cave reward player. And then the defense just didn't do anything much. Scooter Burdett, eight tackles. And that is about it. Welcome in, Drew Dabsky. All right, so as always, I got to get my players of the week here. Yeah, if, uh, if you guys watched the Fortnite Invitational, Dabsky was killing me a bunch in uh, out of nowhere a couple of times. My, my biggest threat, though, in that was fall damage. All right. Next game up here is we are taking a trip over to the Mountain West for two games in a row that are going to decide the, the Mountain West Championship. Right now, we do not know which two teams will, will it be. So the first one is going to be a bit of a surprise here. As we have UTEP at New Mexico. UTEP has a, had a great start to the season. Then they had a very, very rough patch. And they fought back at the end. New Mexico started out really hot. And now they've kind of dropped here in the last couple of weeks. So we'll see who has a date in the Mountain West Championship as a 70 overall or a 68 overall. Uh, let me know if you're here, um, Coach Moroku. Uh, heads or tails, kick or receive. But we're going to get it off now. All right, so UTEP or New Mexico now. Fans of New Mexico, uh, they had a three-year streak of making it to the Mountain West Championship, and then they just completely sputtered out. Those were the days of Ryan Leaf leading the Lobos before he went on to South Carolina and completely falling off the face of the earth. So Mountain West here, UTEP and New Mexico. It's a home game for New Mexico. Winner is going to the Mountain West Championship against... Uh, either UNLV or Fresno State. And they'll be heavy underdogs. Who is going to win this one? If you are betting on this game, it's four and a half point favorite for the home Lobos. And the over under is 50.5. And I think the under hit on the last game. I think it, what, what was that? 27 24? So that was 51. Yeah. So just under it was a good line. Here we go, UTEP, the Miners against the Lobos. All right, who is going to win this game? All right, heads and kick as always. I don't see Coach Moroku in chat. And we are off. Five and six versus six and five. Who is going to do it here? 7-0 here for UTEP. An early score for the Miners, who primarily uh, rebuilt themselves out of the transfer portal this season as they take a 14-7 point lead. New Mexico as well, but they lost their quarterback, um, their transfer from Northwestern. So they've kind of been going down as UTEP now has a lead. Can they finish it? Or is New Mexico going to make a play? They do. It's a long touchdown. And now all of a sudden, the fourth quarter, they have the ball and they're driving it and they get it. They're down one point. The difference in this game is a mixed extra point. 
Here we go, folks. One point separating. All these games are going to be close today. New Mexico has the ball. Fourth and 16. They're going to have to punt. Can UTEP finish this one? We'll jump in at the two-minute mark like normal as we get third and inches, and it's a first down as we jump in. UTEP, one or more first downs, wins them this game. It's going to be timeouts galore now as that is... The transfer from LSU, surprisingly, taking the rock as Roddy Domino, the SFA player, makes a tackle. Fred Austin, the transfer running back from LSU. Roddy Domino in the middle of that defense. Second and eight here. Handoff. Hayford's going to keep it. Can he get the first down? No, they call him short. Willie Hayford, that could have done it. Third and inches away from going to the Mountain West Championship. Third and inches. What is the call? The handoff up the gut. And that's going to be a first down for Fred Austin. UTEP's going to do it. Not only fighting for bowl eligibility, but fighting for the division. And barring disaster, they have done it. Unbelievable here from UTEP. Taking down the Lobos on the road. As now to start Bear Cave, the two underdogs have won outright. And this over under, the under hits in both as well. Assuming there's no more mess ups. So I don't think anybody had UTEP on their bingo card. And UTEP, I think, actually is one of the one of the teams that has um, the most Mountain West uh, championship appearances without winning one. So they'll be going back trying to find a win. Third and 15 here. And that's going to do it. Time ticks away. And Coach Moroku takes down. I believe that's Coach Ch Chum Toad, who is the coach at New Mexico. Fred Austin, the transfer from LSU, lowers his head and gets through. UTEP fans are going crazy. El Paso. And how crazy would it be is like... Like, how crazy is the G5 auto bid? Like, not only here, but in real life, that they're guaranteed a home game in the uh, in the uh, playoffs. Like, you could have Alabama going on the road to UTEP in El Paso for a playoff game. How nutty would that be? Oh, boy. Cryo getting ready for his game in chat. First year coach, chance to make a Mountain West championship. And it's a gritty UTEP squad. It's going to be Coach Woolley versus Coach UNLV, but we got to wrap this game up first. Oh, Logan Radke, he's uh, tweeting, live tweeting from the uh, from the locker room. As Fred Austin, have yourself a day. The running back runs his team into the national, or not national championship, but into the uh, Mountain West championship here. Fred Austin, two touchdowns, 140 yards. Ernest Parrish, the, actually the transfer from Cincinnati getting it done as well. Remember, guys, the transfer portal can really help you out in one season. This is a perfect scenario or perfect case with UTEP. A bottom of the barrel team, one year in the transfer portal, and he's won his division now. As Marquise Brown actually did play the transfer from Northwestern, so he was back this week, and he didn't have a good day. Vincent Bell trying to help him out. Just not many players on this team, and Roddy Domino couldn't do much for them here, and that's going to do it for the Lobo season. Yeah, unless you're Logan Radke, then then of course it just doesn't go your way whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but really, like, how bad did it really mess you up? Because I think that. 
the controversy actually brought your team together to play well. You know what I mean? Like, if you had all those players, would you really be much better? Like, you're fighting for a Big 12 championship. I don't know if that team was pushing a national championship status. But also, to be fair, Jamar Siggins did not play well at Missouri, so it was definitely a risk taking him. That, I, I would attribute that move kind of to, like, DJU uh, going from Clemson to Oregon State. That's, that's kind of how I uh, saw that one. But we're going to keep it here in the Mountain West as Coach Cryo. Let me know heads or tails, kick or receive. Remember, UNLV wins this game. They are going to the Mountain West Championship against UTEP. If they lose, it will be Fresno State as Fresno State has the head-to-head -head over Hawaii. Heads and receive. Cryo wants the ball. Prime rib and fried eggs tonight. Man, you got to get a vegetable on there, otherwise you won't be watching too many more streams, my guy. Except I get, I guess eggs are a superfood. All right, Cryo against Coach Woolley, one of the most talented, or I, I wouldn't say talented teams, but um, UNLV has basically two of the best players in the Mountain West, and then just a math team, and then Hawaii has one of the oldest teams in the conference and in the country. And so, so they are pretty high quality, very experienced. Um, the, this is a rematch of, it was a game day last year, and Hawaii came out on top because UNLV just couldn't hit their extra points. Jay Jetta's having flashbacks, and we all know he's going to lose to the G5 team one way or another. You're either losing to the G5 team or you're losing to Minnesota. Both would be hilarious. All right, Cryo wants the ball. Are they going to give it to him? Yes, they will. So be careful what you wish for here in the great state of Hawaii. Nice little vacation for me here as we're... Uh, Jumping on in, and if you're betting on this game, it is a five-point favorite for the Rainbow Warriors, and an over-under is 64.5, but that first quarter was very low scoring. And Hawaii! Oh, Hawaii! 21-3! They've made it personal! UNLV not doing anything here in the first half, but they got a field goal down 18. We've seen teams blow a 21-3 uh, point lead before, most notably me in the playoffs last year. So UNLV, can they do it? Hawaii adds another touchdown. It's getting grim for them, but they come back. Hold up. Here they go. No. Wait a second. Oh, they settle for a field goal. Still a two-score game. There's still hope. Fumble recovery for UNLV. The comeback starts now. They add another field goal. They've got to start converting touchdowns as we're headed down to a nice uh, ending here. Third and four, and they don't get it. They're going to have to punt the ball back. they got to get a stop. Can the defense do it? Remember, we can't jump in. They do. Defense gets a stop. Here we go. Couple of plays here. We will jump on in. Third and 10. And here we go. It's an eight-yard penalty on the defense. First and 10 here for Hawaii. Or UNLV. Down eight. They need a touchdown. Dyron Satterfield. This is a team that lost last week to South Alabama. And they're yamming a deep first play. And he leads them out of bounds. Dyron Satterfield has had a terrible couple of weeks. The offense has been struggling mightily recently. They got to find a way. Can they do it? As Di Darren Archer gets stood up in the backfield. These teams not, or they're not playing the way they normally play. Is Dyron Satterfield and Darren Archer going to cost them a chance? The defense played, played fine here in the second half, only giving up one touchdown. Third and 11, Dyron Satterfield, legacy moment, dumps it off to Darren Archer. That's not going to do it. Now, the decision time here for UNLV, are they going to go for it or are they going to kick it and hope for the timeouts? They're going for it. We're at their own 31. Dyron Satterfield, can he do it? It's going to be a screen pass. They got to get there, and they don't. Hawaii gets the turnover. 
Now, this game is not over, folks. They still have all three timeouts, but it's definitely in shambles. Coach Woolley now, one first down, wins the game. The redshirt senior, Kinnery, can he get the win? An offset, I oh, can he get there? He gets eight. Cryo CCG hopes are in shambles. Second and two. They got to get some push here on the defensive end. And they give him the first. Hawaii is going to survive. They're going to win the game and send Fresno State and uh, Chadley Brown. Quarterback Chadley Brown to the Mount West Championship against UTEP. Hawaii plays spoiler as they will have a nine-win season. An unbelievable year here for uh, for Coach Woolley. As it's just going to be a couple of kneel downs, there might be a chance that they get the ball back or maybe a field goal attempt, something. They are going to line up to throw the ball. So an interesting call here is they really could just kneel on it and end the game. Can UNLV do something special here? Cryo is uh, trembling on the sidelines. They bring a blitz, dumps that off, and they do get the stop. He didn't go out of bounds. They needed to carry him out there. Jonathan Stevens flirting with disaster. But the field goal coming out, but they aren't even going to uh, snap this ball. And don't worry at the top there. That's just what happens with the Hawaii Stadiums. Um uh, it's it's the revamped team. They they didn't realize people watch CPU versus CPU when they made this stadium. So yeah, uh, it's just an overhang getting in the camera views way. But that's gonna be the game: Fresno State versus UTEP in the Mountain West Championship. As if we're looking at the lines, Hawaii covers and the over under the under hits for the third game in a row. Couple big plays here for Hawaii, and it just was too late for UNLV. And they just, when you settle for field goals and don't score touchdowns, and you force your quarterback to throw it 53 times, it's just never a recipe to win the game. Cryo, you're officially welcomed to the SFA. There's no new members who are really in the inner circle until you feel pain like you do now. So, welcome in. I can assure you there will be many, many more heartbreaks before you get any lick of success. And here's how the defense shook out here for. I mean, it's as much pain as he's felt so far. Yeah, th this is this is like a mild pain. This is as good as it gets. You know, this is this is a. I mean, also, you know, these 6-6, six and six, they're still probably going to go bowling. We'll, we'll have to see how uh, the bids shake out. But uh, And how about Coach Woolley, though? A nine-win season for Hawaii. Coach Woolley has done something magical there out, out in the Pacific. I'm really excited to see what they do with this next generation. As, remember, they have an SFA reject coming in. Um as quarterback Kareem Paul coming in, the 75 overall. So we'll see what he does next year. But Hawaii's going to be a, t a really fun team to watch. All right, folks. So we are now done with the Mountain West. That, uh, that game is set. Fresno State versus UTEP next week. But now next up is we're going to go to the Conference USA. And this is another massive game for the group of five as Louisiana Tech right now is the second highest ranked um, group of five team in the country, uh, really citing their win over number 11 Stanford as the big resume pusher. So we'll see if they can get another high quality win against Louisiana. 
And remember, if they're battling resumes against a team like Rutgers, Rutgers beat Louisiana earlier in the year, so they've got to get this win. So, uh, new coaches, the coach for LA Tech, Cal's World, if you're here, heads or tails, kick or receive. I think he's inactive. And if you're betting on this game, is it's a five and a half point favorite for the Road Bulldogs. Remember, led by SFA player Young Sung Bong, his redshirt senior year, one of the first athletes ever in the SFA in the uh, NCAA 14 era. And then this over under is 64 and a half as well. I don't know if that was a mistake or it was just the same from Kenzie, but we have two of the same over unders. That might have been me. But 64 and a half. Here we go. Winner goes to the Conference USA Championship, and they're going to face Memphis, who took down SMU, who is the heavy favorite going into the week. So Memphis is going to take out on one of these teams and try to ruin their CFP hopes. All right, here we go. L.A. Tech in Louisville, or Louisiana. Louisiana up 14-0. This is a team who, for years, was the group of five favorite, and they just never did anything. And now this year, we finally got off the horse, and all of a sudden, they are storming back into the race. They're up 10 at halftime, up home. Can Louisiana do it? Can they finally get that marquee victory in the group of five to make themselves a real competitor? LA Tech, they're on the ropes. Young Sung Bong, they have the ball. A critical fumble. Is this their moment? They've got to score. 24-14, and they do. So Louisiana now, can they run out the clock? Fourth down. Here we go. Young Sung Bong. The SFA player, one of the first times we get to really watch him in his career. The redshirt senior from Japan. Can he do it? Get a game-winning victory here with a field goal. Sends it to overtime. Touchdown likely wins it. Caleb Curtis gets about six. Plenty of time, all three timeouts. He's already 19-37, one TD. And remember, he is very, very quick. Think of like a Kyler Murray. Young. Throws that out wide. It's another great pass. Mike Hardy. All right, LA Tech kind of heating up here. Minute 43, three timeouts left. And that's another dump off. It was a wobbler, but it works as Adam Novak powers through the defense 11 yards. Now remember, guys, LA or Louisiana has quite a few good SFA players. Top of your screen is Bobby Chalk, the transfer from Ole Miss. In the middle, you got Ned Domican Sue. Yes, Ned Domican Sue, the prime pass rusher here. As that goes low, Bobby Cobb scoops it off the ground. They call it a catch. Second and six now. Fakes the throw. Throws it deep out of bounds. Bong misses his man. Likely just throwing it away as the pocket was collapsing. Third and six now in no man's land. Definitely two, pos or a two down um, situation here. Third and six here. Shotgun man in motion. It's the tight end Curtis. Delayed, gave to the running back. He finds some room. That's going to be a first down, a big-time call from the head coach. And that is going to be Bobby Cobb, his 24th rush, 90 yards. First and 10, minute under a minute now, still three timeouts. Young Sung Bong, the offensive line playing great. Wide open, man. Pat Vaughn now. 
Young Sung Bong is sharing the wealth on this drive. That's uh, like five different receivers, it seems, have gotten a touch. 53 seconds left. They're in prime position now. Tie this game. Cobb up the middle. He breaks one, and they're going to call him a yard short. And Louisiana starts calling their own timeouts now. They're trying to save a little bit of time here. This is where, if you're Louisiana, you've got to have a play from Chalk or Nadamakin Sue. Young Sung's going to keep it his first carry of the day that we've watched, and it's six yards inside the five. Louisiana uses their last timeout now. A touchdown wins the game. A field goal sends it to OT. Goal line stand. First and goal. Bong makes an adjustment. He has the time to bring a blitz. Plenty of time. Jumps it off, and he's stopped. Mike Hardy stopped after one, and now they're using their own timeouts. 43 passes on the day. Second and goal. Bong. He's going to escape, and he brought down by the edge rusher. What a play. It, there was a free lane there for Young Sung in the open field, but he was sacked. Third and goal. Game on the line from the nine. LA Tech, can they get another critical victory? Bong over the middle. Open man. Touchdown, Caleb Curtis. LA Tech takes the lead. Now an extra point to move it to four. Another bear cave taken forever as we've had nothing but close games so far. 33 seconds, no timeouts left. Can Louisiana do something magical? Spoil their rival season. It's a short kick. They're going to have to return this. That's Bobby Chalk and he goes nowhere. Brooks White, he was going to be the backup. He was going to enter the transfer portal for Flynn Saunders. But last second, Flynn Saunders went to App State. So all of a sudden now he is the man here in Louisiana. Can he do the unthinkable? Can they get a 10-win season chance at a CFP on the line? White, he's yamming it deep. It's a wobbler and it's tipped away. And you got to watch out also for Shane Ocho, the SFA player, the former Cincinnati Bearcat. He is their top receiver, bottom of your screen. White. Damn it, to the other side, it's dropped! The receiver had a chance not only at chunk yardage, but to turn the corner. There was nobody there if he escaped the trailing man. But he dropped it. Unbelievable. Third and ten now. Can White get any help? Can they get into yam range? All out blitz. And he's hit as he throws. Fourth down. LA Tech getting aggressive on the defensive end and it works out. Fourth and ten. 16 seconds left. Only chance for LA Tech is a conversion and a yam. Five-man rush delivers that. Can he get the first down? They do. They got to hurry it up, though. 11 seconds left. Clock stops for a second. C.J. Madison, the clutch man. They're going to spike it here. Oh, could they get him off sides? Time is ticking. No, they don't. So seven seconds left here. Two plays, maybe a chance at a yam and getting out of bounds or getting a stoppage. But they need a touchdown. 60 Five yards away. They're going empty. White only a four-man rush. They're going to dump that off. And Lavelle Chase secures it. But that's going to be the game. And LA Tech survives. They are going to the Conference USA Championship to face Memphis. Unbelievable. What a game-winning drive there for Young Sung Bong. Putting the team on his back. Being a field general when he's really just a scrambler. An unbelievable talent down here. Something special is brewing for the Bulldogs.
And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you guys can talk all you want about who's the best quarterbacks in the country. I There's not many SFA quarterbacks we've seen do game-winning drives quite that efficiently. We've seen guys like D. Dowis, C.J. Irons always choke. We've seen guys like Dak Prescott, Bo Wallace always choke. Josh Gamara always choke, right? So something to be said about leading a game-winning drive with the season on the line. Young Sung Bong, does he have the clutch gene this year? Twenty-eight, twenty-four here for LA Tech. They keep their season alive. Now all of a sudden, it's it's looking like a two-horse race for the uh, for the G5 bid. The winner of the AAC game this week and LA Tech. Yeah, Tavares Trace just sucks. He, there's no choking. He doesn't have the opportunity to choke because he loses the game before they even have a chance. All right, Young Sung Bong, 25-44, two touchdowns, and on the ground adds 53. Good game by Bobby Cobb, who had the game-winning touchdown. Also a redshirt senior, so another older team here. And on defense, they got an interception for Peterson. Kicker didn't have to do much. And Brooks White. Tough last drive there. Shane Ocho, his final game. He did get a touchdown, but only 90 yards there. No targets at the end of the game. And on defense, once again, disappointment for this team. And Ndamukong Sue potentially playing his last uh, regular season, or is playing his last regular season game. And Bobby Chalk, the transfer from Ole Miss as well. Going to move on to the next level. And that is the game. I don't know why I went to team stats. Well, we've had two favorites win, and we've had two underdogs win today. So, on Bear Cave, at least. The under hits again, so all unders hitting today so far. But LA Tech did no cover. And you know what it is. It is time for the... Um, this is the only game on the schedule today that does not involve a division race. As I'm going to change the coach as I don't like to be the coach of the team when I play it. I don't know if it affects anything. It's just a personal preference. But it is on Bear Cave because we have the Brothers Bull. It is Auburn and Coach Cabbage against Charlotte and Coach Kenzie. Brothers IRL, Charlotte and Coach Kenzie. He is the former head coach of Auburn. So a lot of lore on this game. Cabbage gets the choice of heads or tails, kick or receive. So let me know, Cabbage. We're going to get started here. Tails and then kick or receive. And this is our push game for the day. Don't let that over or don't let the overalls fool you. Cabbage, if you win, do you want uh all right, tails and receive. So we watched Auburn play against Alabama. Their defense was terrible, but their offense played really well. The question today is can Charlotte avoid the deathly turnover? They have one of the best rushing teams in the country. Can they avoid the critical errors? Last time it was a fumble and triple overtime against Western Kentucky on the goal line. Oh, Fink. There's a reason you didn't, win a, you didn't make a bowl game this year. <laughs> How do you not know Kenzie and Cabbage are brothers? Or have you ever been in a VC where they're both talking on the same mic? It's happened to quite a few times. All 
All right, here we go, though. If you're betting, it's a push game, and the over-under is 49 and a half. So not a lot of uh, faith that they're going to hit the over here. Welcome in, coach from Virginia, DiGiorno. Um, we had Navy win outright, UTEP win outright, Hawaii covered, and Louisiana Tech no cover. Now we're on to the Sickos game of the week, and Auburn wants to receive. So here we go, Charlotte, and I believe Winnie Corso is back, but don't quote me on that. As who is going to score here first? Not much action here in the first quarter, as it's going to be 0-0. So the under bet looking pretty good. Once again, Auburn opens up the scoring, though. Charlotte adds a field goal. Who's going to take that lead for half? Charlotte adds another field goal, and that's the difference. Auburn's able to finish the drive. Charlotte is not. As we get a no-good field goal here for Auburn as we head to the second half. 14-6. Can Charlotte battle back? No, Auburn adds another field goal. Charlotte is choking. They've got to find a way to score. And Auburn adds another field goal. So the door is still open here for Kenzie. Kenzie, there it is for Kenzie. They get it, and they go for two. So an interesting, they're down 14, but they choose to go the analytic play. Go for two. They want to get aggressive here. And all of a sudden now, Charlotte might have them on their back foot if they score again, and they force a three and out. Here comes Charlotte. Remember, we won't jump in until the two-minute mark. Fourth and 12. Are they going to go for it? No, they punted, so they're going to rely on the defense. Going to be a first and 10, and we're going to jump in. Second and three for Auburn around the 50. Can Charlotte get a stop on defense? Second and three, handoff to the right side, and they stop him in the backfield. Here come the tight outs. A first down potentially wins the game. They're going to hand it off again. Can they get him to the outside? They do. The safety brings him down two times in a row. Witty Corso, baby. Two plays in a row. He's missed half the season with injury, but he just makes the two most critical plays on the season. Winnie Corso, two times in a row. He had that lingering injury that kept him questionable for weeks. And he's back today making plays. The SFA players always come back. And don't mind this. Kenzie wanted to make a coaching change. Remember, you wanted to uh, change your starting quarterback. And we have. So that's why it's showing as a, uh, as a new coach. But... This is a new quarterback. This isn't Jonas Browning, who's captain the quarterback all season long. Kenzie got mad at him, benched him, so we'll see what happens here with the backup. As Sims, he is the man who cost them the, the division with a fumble on the goal line. Marco Sims. But he's not the one who got benched. It was the quarterback. But Andrew Walton kind of playing pretty well today. I mean, pretty average, but... Second and one, he's going to take off, and he goes down! Jonas Browning definitely would have gotten that as Marcus Pittman gets his third sack of the day. They're hurrying it back up, third and five. They still have a timeout to play with. He's stepping up in the pocket, and that's going to be a first down to Marco Sims. Can Marco Sims make up for his critical error a few weeks ago? First and ten now, Auburn. Can they survive? Dumping that off yet again. The best ride receiver on the team, Robert Cooper, gets involved now. His clock is ticking, though. A lot of time ticking off. We are in the am range, though, here for Charlotte. 30 seconds left. Walton, they're bringing a blitz. Can he get it off? He does! And that's a catch! Zach Gooden gets the foot in bounds as they're across the 50 now. Auburn starting to tighten up their, their butt cheeks here. Things are getting a little bit tough. Just like Cabbage in the Fortnite tournament yesterday, he almost choked like an eight-round lead. Charlotte, they have a chance here. He yams it deep, and that's another absolute piss missile. Matthew Lawrence now. Walton, what a QB. Why wasn't he starting all season long? These are darts.
First and ten now. Charlotte, deep drop. Yamming it again, and this time, oh, they fumbled the pick. That was game. But the linebacker lets it go right through the wickets. Oh, that was it. 19 seconds left from the 26. The brother bull is popping here in Charlotte. Second and 10. The Pope is in attendance. As he's overthrown. Remember, the Pope is in Charlotte this week as he was on some ACC business as Notre Dame will be joining the ACC next year. He is in, the, he is in attendance for third and 10. Third and 10 now, Charlotte. It's going to be a screen pass. Marco Sims, legacy moment as he goes out of bounds. Down six here, 11 seconds left. Fourth and 11, game on the line. Fourth and 11, what is the call from Kenzie? Three down linemen. And he's not going to get the throw off. That's a fumble. They pick it up from Auburn. That's the game. The fifth turnover of the day for Charlotte. Unbelievable. Coach Cabbage gets the better of his, his, uh, of his brother here, the former coach. And, uh, and he is bragging rights for a whole nother year. Unbelievable. Five turnovers. Five. You think Kenzie would preach ball security during practice over the bye week, but no. Five turnovers. That's unbelievable. Kenzie, I love you. <laughs> What a game, though. A lot of people were roasting me saying that that, that that game shouldn't have been a push. Well, guess what? It came down to one play. So, ha. As the under hits yet again. That's all straight unders here today. And when when you get into games like this, it's it's the, the closer scoring, you know. We're uh, always... Tougher to score in these environments. What a play there at the end. Just never felt them coming from the blind side. Put the ball on the ground. Where well, it didn't matter anyways, fourth down, but Coach Cabbage, 4-8 and eight in his first year, but it's kind of like the Army-Navy win, you know? If you beat your biggest rival, it's a good year, right? Hey, look at the smiles from Auburn, beating their former coach. As let's see how it shook out here. Is Harrell is a really good running back. Is they, I'm still in awe of Winnie Corso making the plays that he did. Um... Alfonso Jackson didn't play the whole game. It was Dante Talley at some point. Harrell. I mean, this is a fantastic showing from a Charlotte team. Like, Auburn, yeah, they, they aren't all that great in the in the SEC, but they uh, they definitely have the roster that should be able to handle Charlotte with ease. So, big win here for Charlotte. Or, I wouldn't say win, but it's like a moral victory of sorts. Is Aaron Walton only had one pick, so does that mean that they had four? Four fumbles? I guess there's some fumbles there for the runners. Yeah, Marco Sims had two more fumbles, Kenzie. So think about that next time you you don't give the ball to Tra more. I had some drops here. They probably had a fumble from a wide receiver or a uh, or a kick returner. As Terrell Temple got a pick uh, when he corso two critical tackles there at the end. Sergio Cotta four tackles, and our boy Devonte Billings. He do anything? No. So he finishes the regular season with three pick sixes. Probably because you're behind, Kenzie. Anytime you get behind by multiple scores, the game, no matter what playbooks or anything you run, is going to um, just spam throws.
So that's always kind of the the especially in the SFA, one of the hard parts around, about running triple option, and we've seen that from Georgia Tech quite a bit, is like if they get down early, they're screwed because they don't have a team that's good enough, you know, to do anything, right, That when, when they're not running the ball. So um, if you get down early as an option team, you're kind of screwed. But before we get to Baylor, Phil, uh, also congratulations on the bowl game, uh, potential bowl game. Um, we've got Akron and Texas Longhorns. This is the Patreon choice of the week. And for those of you guys who don't know, at the day at the beginning of season 12, we debuted the sports book. It's been one of the biggest hits. Um, in the first week, we had the biggest upset we've ever seen on Bear Cave as a uh, I believe it was a top 10 Texas, or they they were for sure ranked. Uh, lost to Akron outright. And can they do it again here? Akron is a 21-point uh, dog. That's actually better than what they were last time. I think it was 31 points. Um, and the over-under is 55 and a half. Now, Texas is on a two-game losing streak. They've lost to LSU and Mississippi State two weeks in a row. So if you are here, Dave, let me know. Kick or receive. Oh, Texas was unranked. Why did I have his 31-point favorites then? I mean, I guess they're still 21-point favorites here. I, it's less because it, they've done it before. But this time, they're not playing in Akron. They were playing in Akron last time, I believe. Texas is at home this time. Dave, kick or receive here. Yeah, this is the meme bet. I put 5,000 on it, and it was my best hit I've ever had on the, on the sports book. As Texas might be snubbed out, there is a couple of scenarios where they would have, where, where they'd be in the conversation. They do have two of the best wins in the country. They actually, according to the committee, had the best win in the country, that win over Oklahoma. So if Texas can show that they have figured it out here against Akron today by destroying them, then who knows. But that topic is for next week and then weeks onward. But today, they just got to right the ship. Get back on the right track. This young team needs to be led. Coach Dave, are you going to pick a uh, heads or kick or no? No, that just means that they average zero interceptions, which it just means they average less than one interception a game. The game's not very good. All right, here we go. Next quarter, Texas. Can they score? They add three on the opening possession and a quick touchdown there. Remember, the line is 21. So after one, it's a 10-0 lead. Great start for Texas. 13-0 here. Akron doing nothing on the offense side. They did miss an extra point, but we're at 22-0. Is that Scorigami territory potentially? Akron, they do add one, but a quick touchdown for Texas as they respond. And they are on the road to covering here, as I believe that's a 29 point difference as we end enter the fourth quarter and oh baby 22 points now just over the cover line texas adds a field goal can they can akron cover no texas beats them emphatically here today 46 to 14 right in the ship here winning by 32 they finally get a monkey off of their back as they get um, they got a kickoff return, too, from Coles. And I know Coles is a good player. We've seen him almost break him a couple of times. Sal Easton, only a, only a touchdown today as Aaron Allen got his run going. Thad Mooney, only 28 yards. Sonny Myers. And Anthony Townsend got himself two touchdowns. Decent performance from him, but, I mean, the offense just didn't do much all day. And defense, what can you do? They did get a couple of sacks, but it's just you're, you're clearly outclassed. You're not at home. It's not the beginning of the season. You're not going to catch Texas here after two straight losses. So that's the game. That's Scorigami. Nice. Always like a good Scorigami.
All right, so we are a little over halfway through Bear Cave now. Woo woo. As we're now on to, like we like to say, the right side of the graphic where things really start to heat up, and we've got a banger coming from the Big 12. On one hand, we've got Oklahoma State having their best season in recent memory. They're one win away from bowl eligibility with Statavius Gates, the number one quarterback prospect coming into the year. And Coach Fed trying to get himself uh, to, to really any success here. Experience something good happening to him for once. And then on the other side, you got Baylor, the historical great. But once again, locked out of the division. They're on the bubble. They're at number 10. That is the bubble spot right now. So they need a big-time performance. But this is an Oklahoma State team that played Oklahoma close on Bear Cave. Last week, they played Iowa State very close on Bear Cave. So can they do it again here? If you are um, betting on this game, it's nine and a half point favorite for Baylor. And it's an over under a 59.5. So instead, if you're here, let me know heads or, kick, heads or tails, kick or receive. Because I think the over hit on that last game for the first time this week. Um, 55 and a half. Yeah, that, that definitely hit. Oh, man, this is a big game for Phil. What does Phil need? I didn't see it earlier. Do you get a bonus on your budget if you win a bull? Yes, so if you win a bull game, you get a uh, what's called an off-season strategy. So you get the choice of um, a couple of different things, which you can look at in the, uh, in the uh, Recruiting Central Guide, um, the Season 12 Guide. There's a section for off-season strategies. Put 10k on Baylor to win and not, but not cover. I don't know what you mean. Does Citrus get the auto? No, 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 no. Citrus does not get an auto priest or uh. Yeah, no. There's no, no auto postseason boost. No. The, if you make the playoff, you automatically get a, a, um, a an off-season strategy. Yeah, it's only if you win a bowl game or make the CFP. All right, so I don't see Sved, so it's going to be heads and kick per usual. And the, the era of Flames players at Baylor, one of the best dynasties we've ever seen, this is the last call. Colt Brennan, Braylon Burnside, what do they have in store for us today? Baylor gets an early lead here. 14-0 here for Baylor. What a start for them. They needed a big game today, but here comes Oklahoma State. They're still battling. Only up by 7. They add 1. They're up 10 now. And, oh, baby, can Oklahoma State do something here? Or is Baylor going to run away with it in the second half? It's very close. Oklahoma State gets within a score, but Baylor once again, big play. Every time Oklahoma State scores, they respond. Now it's looking dire here for Oklahoma State. They've got to get a score quick. They're down three scores. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Baylor, are they going to add more? No, but a 37-17 statement here for Baylor, and it's their final statement made on the regular season, and they are going to have to wait until uh, the CFP gets together, see if they end up into the um, uh, college football playoff. Braylon Burnside got a 92-yarder. Silva got a kickoff return, and it's just never in doubt for Baylor here today. Quavius Gates, his final game of his uh, freshman season as they will not make a bowl, is he's brought some life to the Oklahoma State Cowboys, something they really have not seen um, in the NCAA 14 era here in one of the hardest divisions in the country. And they're without their top receiving target, so don't know if they ever really had a chance in this game, but Deuce Withers did get a sack. Laren O'Connor, you'd like to see these SFA players start to wake up and make a difference. Next year might be the year. As Cole Brennan gets two touchdowns, Braylon Burnside two touchdowns, 183 yards doing his thing. And, uh, oh, man, McMillan, the top target here, was just feasting on this defense. And then on defense here, Dave Cabral, we've seen him 
quite a while, one of the senior leaders on this team. And that will do it for Baylor here. So once again, no insane upsets outside of... Uh, Um, Baylor, please play defense. Chat's going crazy today. I'm. Oh no, I missed the player of the game. Oh well, that's all right. Skip to what the people want. I don't do stuff early. Sorry, Jay Jettas. Um. All right. So next up is uh, what I've. Uh, kind of been talking about is potentially the lowest ranked team right now who has a path to an at-large bid and that's flame at Ill illinois uh flame if you're here heads or tails kick or receive as he takes on michigan this is going to be a big one here for flame can he do it it is a six and a half point favorite for the michigan wolverines a team who we who's back to full strength their only loss was with their backup quarterback to penn state and the over-under is 54 and a half. Can Michigan make the statement they're going to the Big Ten Championship no matter what? But Illinois, chance to make a big statement. One of the only uh, at-large teams left that has a massive game on the schedule. As you see, Michigan has clinched the division as they do have the head-to-head -head over Ohio State. And Minnesota has clinched this division for... Uh, better part of about six weeks, actually, they've held this division uh, win. Shout out to Mushbrain today for getting that 6-6 six and six mark. One of the only uh, teams on the edge to do it this week. Uh, Logan, if you win the Big 12, you're automatically in. Now, if you lose a game, you're probably out because you'll be four losses. But yeah, no, it's it's winning in. As long as you are a Power 5 team that wins their conference and you're ranked, you're good. You're good. First time coaches, it like people are always telling me, oh, sorry, sorry for asking so many questions or sorry for, I probably should have known that. No, it is, the SFA is so deep. There's so much to learn. That's why it's so much fun. So ask away any questions. As I don't see Flame here, but he is going to kick. Vince Wilfork, can he finally do something in his sorry career? I'm calling him out. Vince Wilfork, you need two sacks today. As here we go, Michigan adds three points. We're in the big house. Probably the craziest atmosphere in the country. And this is a low-scoring game. Illinois takes the lead. Oh, boy. 14-3 to three at halftime. Here comes the legendary coach, Flame. He's been dormant for years. It's 24-3! to three! Illinois on their horse. Can they get it done? One percent. No, Michigan, a quick score. Uh-oh, here we go. James draws, making a play. Can Illinois? Yes, they do. Illinois is a three-score lead. And on the road, they absolutely dipsy-do the shit out of Michigan. Michigan gets pummeled. At home. Unbelievable. What did we just watch? They just got bodied. And that's without Muffy Breastfeeder. In like half their secondary. Davis Holman. Legendary game for the SFA player. James Draws tried to get it back, but he just couldn't. And is Tim Miles. I've been shitting on him his entire career, but look at this performance. I mean, not not insane, but he did what he had to do. And Boogie Toes, 42 carries, 209 yards. The sophomore running back becoming the workhorse they needed. Unbelievable. Davis Holman, team on his back, Eddie Royal, the transfer from Tennessee. And Nigel Pancake, without his right tackle with him, he... Hunkers down the blind side. 16 pancakes. And Vince will for two sacks. I called him out and he got it. 
Unbelievable. Skip Stackle, the SFA player, and Bud Paler, the freshman. The two freshman linebackers making the play. The SFA players. Unbelievable. Xavier James as well, the SFA player. This is what we play this for, is your SFA players putting together a master class performance in the must-have moments. Flame, one of the best coaches this league has ever seen. It's Jason Givens, one of his first games back, man. He is not feeling it as he throws two picks. James Draws had that one very long run for a touchdown get him back into it. But what a performance from Illinois. Cheeto tried to have the team on his back, but he just couldn't do anything. Unbelievable. All right, so there's our first big time uh, change in the rankings happening this week. Where will Illinois go? Where will Michigan go? Oh, baby. Before we go farther, I do need to get this uh, player of the game for the Baylor game just so I don't forget to actually post As I do that, if I miss a screenshot, I forget to post the game, and then it's a whole hubba All right. Only a few games left here, boys. You need to pay more attention, Jay Jettas. It's an in-game recruit. All right, it's time, Radkey. Let me know heads or, or kick or receive as you are the home team. But Arkansas at Iowa State, the winner of this game, wins the division. And they will go on to face TCU and Coach Mango in the Big 12 Championship with a playoff spot on the line. And most likely the number uh, 7 seed on the line. Remember, if you win your conference, you're guaranteed a... Or Power 5 Conference, you're guaranteed a um, not only a uh, CFP spot, but you are also guaranteed either a buy or a first round home game. So remember, we put a very big importance on winning your conference. Yeah, this one matters, Mango. And if you are here for the CC Sportsbook, this is a four-point favorite for the Iowa State Cyclones. Arkansas, uh, according to the committee, is by far the the worst two loss team in the country. Um, uh, really citing strength of schedule and and how they performed against quality opponents. But Iowa State, this is a four point favorite and a 58 and a half over under. Winner of this game wins the division. We're getting down to the last few games in the regular season. These are the ones that matter the most. We're at Jack Trice. All yellow. Oh, baby. Poor West Virginia, man. The blue square really killed him this year. Probably because they attempted to sign Eddie Lacy <laughs> as an offensive coordinator. The game had to punish him. We got some Pigs fans, some Woo Pig Sueys. We've got some Iowa State fans. Who is going to take the division? Radke went from the, the most troubled spot in the offseason. He ruined Illinois season last year. And then he comes to Iowa State and inherits a shambles of a roster just all going away to the transfer portal and he's somehow gotten them to this point they beat Baylor early in the year and that's when we knew this team was something different and a quick score for Iowa State holy smokes they kicked that it was like a it must have been a turnover and a score and a 14-0 lead here early on here come the Cyclones at home can they hang on Iowa or Air Arkansas quick 10 points We've got a ball game here, folks. Jamar Siggins, the transfer from Missouri. This is the biggest game of his career. 14-10 here in the third quarter. Iowa State makes it two scores. 
Brad Thornton, though, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Can he do something special here? Uh, here we go, folks. The final six minutes of the game. And Iowa State. And on fourth and seven, they run it, and they don't get it. Opening the door for Arkansas. Remember, we jump in if it's one score inside two minutes. Right now, it's 11 points. That's two scores. And they got an interception by Chaz Weber, the SFA player. Is that going to lock it up for Iowa State? Can they finish it? Remember, we do not jump in. Can they finish it? Second and three. Yes, they do. Iowa State wins the division, and they have a date with TCU with the Big 12 championship. Chaz Weber, the SFA player. The, I think he was a two or a three star coming in clutch, and points were at a premium here today, 21 to 10. Iowa State covers and exposing the pigs. Jamar Siggins runs it in. They had, a, they had to defend a 74-yard TD run at the end of the second quarter, and they outlasted them. That's going to be a fun game next week. So either Iowa State or TCU will be in the college football playoff this year. And for Illinois, who has a win over Iowa State, they the perfect scenario for them just happened. They beat Michigan by a lot, and then Iowa State won. They want Iowa State to win the Big 12. Um, unbelievable. The only thing that didn't happen that could have happened for them is Baylor losing. Um, but we'll, let's look through. And, uh, man, Johnny Williams carrying the rock, 187, two touchdowns, and uh, just a fantastic season for this Iowa State team. Um, one of the biggest turnover jobs. Stevie Scumbag is still there. Uh, they, Zadie likes it, but the man of the hour – is Chaz Weber the critical interception to seal the game? The junior, unbelievable performance from this team today. Brad Thornton, eight for twenty-four. I I don't make the the choo choo emote, man. Uh, that's just what Twitch gives you. John Jackson trying to do something. But Brad Thornton just disappeared in the biggest moment for this team. And Arkansas, once again, a very good season. But they're just, uh, just a step below where they need to be for another year in a row. They've always blamed the SEC out of conference. Tough schedule that they always have to play. But this year, schedule changed. And they had a much weaker schedule. And they still couldn't get it done. Chaz Weber had a great game. I mean, they just stood on their head. Iowa State finding a way to win, man. This is just one of those teams that just got better and better as the season went on. What's the score? Is Washington up 7-0? 10-0 for Washington. Man, Vegas eating their own dick right there, giving Oregon a 9.5 point favorite to a team they already lost to. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, uh, before we go to the game, we just got to make sure there's only two games remaining. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Now, now we have one of the most unique scenarios we, we've really seen in recent memory in terms of Power 5 conferences. Oklahoma surprisingly won the division last week after Texas crumbled against LSU and then Mississippi State. So Oklahoma is going to the conference championship no matter what. If they beat Alabama, they will be facing Tennessee next week in the SEC championship. If they lose to Alabama, they'll have to face Alabama again next week in the SEC Championship. Unbelievable. So the question is, Jay Jettas, before we play, who would you rather face in the SEC Championship? Now, if Oklahoma, though, if they win this game... 
and they win again, they could jump Clemson for the number one seed or an ECU if they upset Clemson, right? So buy on the line, obviously. He wants to play Nick, but he's also scared of Nick, yeah. So we'll see what happens here. We're going to drop a prediction here. Who do you guys? I'm going to give you a minute. So if you're one of those people who's like, oh, I didn't see it till it was already over. Get your Bobanos ready. There's no spread or anything like that. Is Jay Jettas going to clutch up or is he losing to EJ Irons in Alabama? We saw CJ Irons unable to clutch up earlier this week or last week it might have been. Is Jay Jettas going to screw the pooch again? One of our oldest, uh, not oldest, but oldest tender coaches in the SFA. As Oklahoma is a three and a half point favorite for the prediction that does not matter. And the over under is going to be 66 and a half. These are two of the best offenses in the country, bar none. Alabama coming off of a double OT loss to Georgia last week. So they this is now a must win for the conference championship. lot of Bob and us on the line in the community here today get those votes in let me know when it ends and Jay Jettas do you want to kick or do you want to receive if you win the toss I will say that these are probably the two teams that have been most impressive to me um this season when watching the games so it kind of seems like now we're in a world where Alabama has to win out and beat Oklahoma twice to potentially make the college football playoff. Oh, here we go. Terrell Remmers in company, the best offense in the country in terms of talent against Alabama, who might have the best one-two punch in the country. EJ Irons, who's in the Heisman race, number two currently, and Tyrone Cox, the beefy running back who runs over everybody. Who is going to come out on top in this one? This is going to be a battle for the ages. Remember, one more time, if Oklahoma wins this game. They face Tennessee next week in the SEC Championship. If Alabama wins, they'll face Oklahoma again next week. So we'll see. But remember, folks, you are playing for that bye the winner of the Power 5 is going to get a buy here in the SEC, pretty much guaranteed. So both of these teams desperately want to win this game. As I don't know why <laughs> number 60 was throwing the rock right there. Jay Jettis wants to kick. We're at Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. That is a mouthful. We were here a couple of weeks ago where Oklahoma survived against OK State. He wants to kick. Here we go, Sumers. Is it going to be Boomer Sooner or Roll Tide? First quarter, 7-0 Alabama. Oklahoma responds. Long drive from Alabama as we head to the second quarter now. Oklahoma adds a field goal. They have the ball again and a turnover. They get a field goal as we go down to half, and Oklahoma gets a field goal right at before halftime as they take their first lead of the game 16 14 oh baby it's heating up here folks Oklahoma has the ball they don't do anything with it Alabama comes back scores a touchdown they have the lead five points Oklahoma has the ball as we enter the fourth quarter a five-point deficit and Alabama takes the lead oh boy it's a 12-point lead here for the Tide can they hang on Oklahoma responds they're down five here we go. Long plays for Alabama. Can they score again? Yes, they do. They re-extend it to two scores. So we are not jumping in unless Alabama responds, or Oklahoma responds. Big play there to Smith. Honey can't do it. Can they get fourth and two? Game on the line here. And they get it. That's Gilliam. And a touchdown for Oklahoma. And the extra point is good. Still a five-point game. We will jump in if it's still close at the two-minute mark. Here we go. Oklahoma, can they get the stop? The CFP committee rated them as the top team in the country with a loss. Second and 12, EJ Irons and Tyrone Cox in the backfield. They're going to keep it for EJ. He fakes out the whole team. There he goes. Down the sideline. Alabama. EJ Irons, can they catch him? No. Touchdown, Alabama. Unbelievable. They might have just clicked.
clinched an SEC championship berth right there. E.J. Irons. The man, the myth, the legend. Making a case to be better than his brother. As Mike dubbed him a few years ago, Electric Jolt Irons. It's cheesy until you just saw that play. Unbelievable. I don't know why I pressed play. We are going to watch, or we're, we are not going to watch this play out as it is a two score game. So, as is Bear Cave. Um, how we do it, you just sim one play at a time. See if Oklahoma can make this a game again. And there's Wild Goose. One of the best freshmen in the country, but it's fourth down, still down 12, and they get eight yards. Is it a first down? It is. All right, so still a chance. Fourth and 10, and drop by McFeeders. The game is going to be over. Oklahoma is going to face Alabama again next week in the SEC Championship. And this result may have just knocked a team like Baylor or a team like Arizona off of the bubble. Unbelievable that EJ Irons run, two Wild Goose touchdowns in overtime, but it was the big-time players for Alabama that won this game. 42-30, to the over hits. Terrell Remmers, two touchdowns on the day. McFeeders got a touchdown. Wild Goose did fantastic there in the fourth quarter. And on defense, no extracurriculars for uh, Oklahoma. Jay Phoenix did get a pick, though. Um, so we'll see them in the SEC Championship next week, folks. For the rematch is Alabama, EJ Irons. He didn't really have a great game at the start. He was all running the ball, Tyrone Cox, and then obviously EJ Irons just dashing them with the read option. And Robbie Reese, he is a gritty young receiver, and he looks fantastic. Can he lead this team as Jimmy Don Willie, the SFA player, leads the team in tackles? Unbelievable. What a game. What a game, Jay Jettas, as he will face Alabama next week. And will that game be game day? That is the question. Jay Jettas, you, you could put aggressiveness at a million, and the game is actually is still going to kick field goals. It's 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 a critical part of football. They're not just going to never kick a field goal if you put high aggressiveness. That's just very unrealistic and, frankly, stupid. All right, so we're going to make sure we have one game left here in week 14 and there is no week 15 anymore in the sfa as you can see it's all the fcs games uh it's just how we have to do it so um conference championships will be next week we have one more game left and it's gonna take me about five ten minutes to get game day set up but we're coming back cincinnati taking on Rutgers. winner goes to the aac championship against Yui in Western Kentucky with likely a CFP bid on the line. Unbelievable. Uh, well, thank you guys all so much for watching, as always, and I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes.